The Power of Grade Content What all this should really teach you, though, is that the Internet is practically built on content. And in particular, it is built on written content. That's because a person who uses Google is usually looking for information or entertainment. And mostly, this is delivered through the written word. Filling your site with lots of content means that it will have a higher chance of including those crucial keywords that Google is looking for. And at the same time, filling your site with content will give you something you can share on social media, and that will entice people to visit your site. More than anything, though, adding lots of great content to your website over time is all about building long-term fans and followers. Think about the sites that you go to regularly and why you go there. Chances are that you go to them because you have learned that they create the kind of content that you enjoy reading. And not only does this mean you keep coming back, continuously creating more opportunities for the site owner and the advertisers to try to sell to you, but it also means you will probably come to trust the content creator. You'll have read so many posts by them on the subject matter that they are an expert in that you'll have learned that you can rely on their knowledge. And then guess who you go to when you want more information. I enjoy using my camera for a bit of amateur photography every now and then. And so in my spare time, I watch a guy on YouTube and read his blog where he shares lots of tips on how to take better photos. The posts are really fascinating because they show how the right change of angle, lighting, or equipment can really transform a photo into something much more dynamic and much more engaging. So guess where I went when I needed new photography for my website? I went to the guy whose expertise I'd been reading about on a weekly basis. This is the true power of what is known as content marketing. It facilitates other forms of marketing, yes, but more important than that is that it allows you to build more trust and authority in your niche and to build a legion of truly loyal and engaged followers. And that's why the most important skill you will learn to work well online is writing. How to write for the web. Good writing can be explained fairly simply. Good writing means that you are communicating efficiently. Writing, like anything else, has a purpose, whether that is to teach, entertain, or inform. At any rate, there is a crux that you need to convey, and this is the purpose of what you've written. A very straightforward way to judge a piece of writing, then, is to simply ask how well it performs that job. Efficient writing means that your visitors will need to invest less time into reading, but will still get the most information and value possible. This is why it is a mistake to use flowery or flamboyant language most of the time. This is particularly true when writing for business, where the temptation might be to use jargon or big, clever terms. I once worked with a company that was trying to sell an EPOS system, but rather than focusing on conveying what that was or why it was useful for small businesses, all the brand wanted to do was show off with words like cloud-enabled, synergy, and strategy. This was meaningless. It wasted the visitor's time, and it meant most people would leave without reading more, let alone buying. On the other hand, if you can quickly and effectively communicate what it is you want to say, then you will find that people stick around and that very often they are eager to buy from you. This is also true with writing designed to be informative or entertaining, especially in an age when everyone is in a rush and few people have time to stick around long enough to read a whole passage of text. This is also why it is a good idea to use the right structure and layout for your content. Specifically, you need to break it up with lots of images. You need to use lots of different paragraphs, and you need clear and bold headers. Make your content skimmable. So does that mean your content is going to be forever light and fluffy, or that it will simply be functional and personalityless? No. Firstly, you can use your broader vocabulary, but only where it serves a purpose. This should A. Provide some additional detail or subtext or subtly alter the tone of what you're saying, or B allow you to say more with fewer words. What's more is that you certainly can be very deep and well-researched with what you're saying and with what you're writing. In fact, this is incredibly important if you want your content to do well. The best kind of content is content that Google calls resource posts. Resource posts are highly comprehensive and detailed discussions on a certain topic. Now, these posts have a lot of value because they provide a source where an audience can learn all about one topic. These are highly shareable on social media because they let someone teach another person by sharing a single link. And they also do very well in terms of SEO because a long, in-depth 1800 word post will have a lot of natural keywords and long-tail keywords, strange phrases that occasionally get typed into Google but which aren't really worth ranking for specifically. Making sure that your content has value is very important in general. 
In fact, this is the only way that you can do this. Another way that you can make sure your content is valuable is to give it something that is unique. To give it a USP. The biggest mistake I see with articles and blog posts online is to repeat a subject matter that has been done a thousand times before while adding nothing new to the table. These include posts like how to get abs or top SEO mistakes. This is derivative and dull. Instead, you should post something that is new and that is unique. This should be something that people won't have seen before and that will really stand out to them. For instance, how about a post that combines two unusual niches? A post that uncovers some interesting brand new scientific research that's relevant to your niche. Or a post that looks back in time to some old forgotten technique. Your content should have an emotional hook. And it should offer something that your audience won't find elsewhere and won't have been read a thousand times before. One more massive tip. Write in a narrative format wherever possible. That means you should be aiming to write content that is phrased in a way that is naturally like a story. Think about something personal you can say about the matter, or just try to give it a beginning, a middle, and an end. Stories work wonders because the human brain has naturally evolved to enjoy stories. We've been listening to stories for thousands of years, and we can't help but to put ourselves in the story and thereby relate and emote. This makes it very hard to stop listening to a story before the end, and it makes it very easy for us to get caught up in a narrative and stirred by it. Stories hold attention but they are also highly persuasive. Speaking of which, the power of persuasive writing. If there's one kind of writing you should try to hone, it is persuasive writing. If you find yourself being hired by brands online, then there is a good chance a lot of them will want you to write sales pitches for them. At the same time, knowing how to write persuasively will also allow you to sell your own goods and your own services. When I started working online, I ran a small writing business. I only ever posted a couple of ads, and I got enough business from those to keep me going for years. Why? Because the ad was so well written. The key is to understand the value proposition. More fundamentally still, the key is to recognize that people place orders based on their emotions and not based on logic. In other words, someone will buy from you because they feel emotionally compelled to do so, and they didn't have time to think themselves out of it. So, you need to make sure that your pitch is something that can get people to imagine what life would be like after they've hired you. That means painting an image will have an emotional response. In the example of selling writing, you might talk about how you can help someone to turn the brand they created into something that is as well respected as the top brands on the web. They can hire someone who will charge very little, but will make their site look amateurish. Or they can hire you, and they can enjoy achieving their business goals. Likewise. If you are selling a fitness product, then the dream or the value proposition is to have abs, to feel confident and sexy, and to meet members of the opposite sex. That's why a great pitch might talk about how you went from being out of shape to being a physical specimen, very happy now with your beautiful wife or husband. Just as emotion motivates, though, it is also emotion that will put people off by buying in some cases. More specifically, people tend to get put off by risk and worry. Humans are actually more motivated by risk than they are by reward, which is to say they normally play it safe. That's why you need to do everything possible to ease their concerns. That means offering money-back guarantees. It means offering social proof, testimonials, and it means offering evidence and proof. That might mean your portfolio of work, or it might mean showing how your promise is different from others. Finally, you then cement the deal by getting the reader or listener to act quickly. People are more likely to act on emotion when they act quickly. So, if you can work them into a fever pitch by saying you have limited stock or by introducing a limited time offer, then this will result in more sales. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.